Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Um, uh, this is Mark, and um, we're going to be starting in about five minutes. So um, we'll, uh, we'll start promptly at four o'clock. Um, hope you had a good day today trading. Uh, so, so hang in there for, for about uh, five minutes. All right, good, good afternoon, everybody. Um, what we're gonna be reviewing today um, is trading small cap uh, biotech stocks uh, in which we have a tremendous certainty uh, are really going to um, 
launch up to provide us with, um, you know, between 100 and 300 uh, percent gains. Now, I'm just going to quickly go over the disclaimer that um, um, all signals and trading opportunities that we, that we provide are for educational and demonstration purposes only. Um, we are not licensed money managers. Every, everyone should understand the, um, that participating in trading uh, the markets involves substantial risk and that a person can lose a substantial amount of money. Um, and um, you should uh, never uh, risk uh, more than you can afford to lose. Now, I just wanted to briefly uh, show you all the right line trading team, which is which is getting larger and larger, um, then getting more diverse. Um, we added a lot of new talent, and um, uh, is really uh, uh, getting bigger. Now, just a little bit about myself. Um, I graduated from an Ivy League university. I went to the University of Pennsylvania for eight years. I graduated with a degree in um, applied mathematics. Uh, I was inducted into the Phi Beta Kappa Honor Society after graduation. I graduated summa cum laude with honors, um, and it was always my desire to go into uh, research and teaching. I applied to a number of uh, um, uh, uh, universities um, for that purpose, and I, I eventually wound up staying in Philadelphia. Uh, as a full-time professor at Thomas Jefferson um, University. Um, while there, I published 15 peer-reviewed articles in top-tier journals. Um, I taught an, an enormous number of undergraduate and graduate students. Um, I've always had the mindset of a scientist, a teacher, and an academician. Um, and I've, uh, uh, I have um, been an invited speaker in many countries internationally and in many, many cities domestically, and I just estimate that I have mentored close to 30,000 traders uh, in my career. That really goes back to 1997, when I first opened my first trading account. Now, if you're looking for the holy grail of options trading, uh, I believe that this is about as close as you're ever going to get. Um, uh, we have a tremendous certainty that the position that we're in is going to launch off. I'm going to show you exactly how that how that works. But if you're looking through something that's always going to make you money, it's just you just can't find it. Now, I always get headers like this: breakthrough strategy produces 140% gain in one trade, 1,500 to 15,000 and change in just a few weeks. Um, Game-changing option strategy to take your portfolio to new heights. A lot of this stuff is really just background noise, and you really, really have to dismiss it, or it's going to cost you a lot of money. It's going to cost you a lot of money to buy, and then it's going to cost you a lot of money to trade. Um, there's no hidden code to trade options. Um, no, there's no special hacks. Um, there really is just um, sound, either fundamental or, um, or or technical ways of trading it. This is really a strong fundamental strategy. Um, it's based on an enormous amount of uh, background study, mathematical optimization to, pro to provide us with up to a 91% win. We just took, closed out a really nice winner. I'll talk to you about it in, in a little bit on Bluebird Bio. Now, th this is a formula that's really unknown to 99% of investors. And it has the potential to deliver enormous success in any market environment. The one thing that's unique about trading this system um, is that it doesn't make any difference whether, whether we're in a tremendous bull market or in a tremendous bear market. Um, these are called catalyst-driven stocks, and they're going to skyrocket irrespective of how the overall market is doing. These are the kind of stocks that uh, when you look on, um, you know, the big movers of the day are going to be the, that are the ones that are going to be up a couple of hundred percent, um, even if the market is deeply underwater for the day. Because the overall market and movement is totally irrelevant to these stocks. Now. We all know that technical analysis is powerful, 
um, but, but, but that it oftentimes fails. And, that, and that's really the problem. We know that if we, I, I get as an example, I put it in here, this is um, Albert Marley, which is a um, uh, big zinc miner. So it comes down to support, hits support, comes back down. We anticipate a bounce and it goes right through support. Um, actually, it, when I shot this slide, it was trading at 193. It's, already, it's all, the way, all the way down, I think, to about 110, 120. And then we have markets in, in which there's absolutely no trend. And that market just trades an absolute chop. So we're going to put technical analysis aside for a minute. And we're really going to trade these stocks based on news that catapults them um, a huge amount. Now, catalyst-driven events come with approximately a 91% win rate. And I'm going to show you all the trades taken to date um, in 2023, and I'll show you our uh, win-loss record. Now, I just want to give you a couple of examples and show you exactly what we're looking for. Now, in order to do this, it takes a tremendous amount of background work and reading. Because every month, the FDA announces all the um, medicines that, it's going to, that it is going to give the thumbs up or thumbs down on. And for the most part, a lot of these medicines sit with really small biotech companies. Um, the companies are often cash flow negative, and a lot of them have no um, uh, medicines yet approved in their pipeline. They, they have a relatively thin float. So news like this on a, on a thinly traded stock with a small amount of um, shares in, in the float is really able to propel that stock up a tremendous amount. Now here's BioXL, the, the ticker is BTAI. And what they were doing is developing a thin, thin for, formula, formulation of mextetotomidine um, was a potential treatment of agitation in patients with mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease. Um, the stock was crushed when irregularities were discovered in data filed by one of the principal investigators. Um, the FDA thought that the principal investigator was actually forging data, which really, really sent the stock down. Um, the major news involved a series of adverse events in which the FDA was never notified on a timely basis of the occurrence. Well, it turned out that all the uh, adverse events in which the FDA was not modified on a timely basis occurred in patients receiving the plac a placebo and not the active drug. So we moved in and bought the stock on the on the uh, uh, on analysis of, of all the phase two data um, with the assumption that the medicine would ultimately get approved by the FDA now that these issues had been put aside. It was approved, and here's how the stock moved, all the way from 588 to $11 a share. Now, um, the option made 331%. The stock rose 102%. So when possible, I'm always going to give you an option um, to trade, but you can also trade the stock if you want to hold it longer. Um, and, and occasionally, there is no option available, in which case we're going to trade the stock. Now, here's Verica Pharmaceuticals. This is really one of my favorite medicines. Ticker is VRCA. They were developing a, um, a treatment for molluscum contagiosum. This is a viral infection that results in uh, round, firm, painless bumps, and it causes enogenital warts. Um, if, you, if you Google them, they're really 
quite unsightly. Um, they, they simply can cause a, a lot of mechanical problems, but also the bigger issue is that anogenital warts um, are a precursor to cancer. Um, a, a lot of them evolve at the base of the, uh, of the lesion in, into a, a carcinoma. Um, at the time, there was absolutely no therapy available to treat it. So what it had was known as orphan drug status. And that's what we look for. We look for treatment um, on an illness in which we currently have absolutely no therapy. Um, you can't met that. Um, the medicine got approved by the FDA based, I mean, we, we saw in the phase two data, myself and I work with three uh, uh, university professors at the University of Miami School of Medicine, that the phase two data was just incredibly powerful. The likelihood of an FDA approval was extremely high. Medicine got approved, and here's how the stock moved. All the way from um, about $5.70 and, um, and up to $7.40. We made 109% on the option, on the approval of that medicine. Now, Emergent Biosciences, ticker EBS, uh, makes Narcan um, uh, medicine. And Narcan, whether you know it or not, is what's used to, um, to reverse the effects of any opioid that you take, whether it's heroin, um, you know, codeine, or really now what, what's now a scourge in the United States, which is fentanyl. Um, EMTs carry it. Uh, in their um, in their trucks and actually on their person, um, it has to be delivered intravenously. Um, it can be delivered intramuscularly, but obviously these people are um, are passed out and going into respiratory failure um, because they've overdosed on these medicines. Um, you want to give it to them uh, intravenously. And um, what uh, EBS had done was asked the FDA to approve Narcan as an over-the-counter medication so that you could receive it with, with absolutely no medicine. Now you know this got now the Narcan is a medicine that's been around for quite a while. I mean I think it's been around for 30 years and uh, we know it's tremendously effective already. It was just a question of whether the of uh, the FDA was going to make it available over the counter and I call this a gimme trade because the likelihood of them not allowing it when fentanyl is killing over 100,000 people a year in the United States is just very, very slim. So this is, this is one of those back up the truck kind of uh, trades where you can really load up on, uh, on the position. Now the stock, the medicine got approved and there's, you can't, uh, there's um, EBS trading right at about 870 up to $13.67, made 173% on the option. Um, and, and as far as I was concerned, this was a gimme. It was just a matter of how high the FDA announcement sent the stock. And it sent it up uh, uh, quite a bit, as you can see. Um, not quite 100% on the stock, about 75 to 80% on the stock. We had 173% on the option. Now, Coherus Biosciences, ticker CHRS, um, it's a position that we've already banked, we've banked money on, and we're still, uh, but what I told investors was to hold on to it because I believe it has a lot of additional upside. So it's an open position in our, or, our portfolio. What it makes is actually two. It's actually a combination um, uh, product um, for FDA approval. It's called a Udinkaya uh, auto injector, and it contains medicine that increases the number of white blood cells um, uh, that, that you have circulating in your blood. I'm just taking a drink of water. Now, what makes this unique? is the auto-injector periodically 
takes a blood sample and analyzes the number of white blood cells that you have in your blood. That you have to have an absolute neutrophil count of 500 millimeters, 500 millimeters of cells per high power field in order to have an adequate number to fight infection. If it drops below 500, then you're prone to get a lot of bacterial infections um, because the white blood cells that that uh, drop are, are neutrophils, and they and there's and that's the um, cellular arm of the immune system, and for the most part, those those are what fight uh, bacteria. The humoral arm, the antibody arm, and fight fights viruses, uh, fights viruses. So the um, the preliminary, preliminary data submitted by the company on the phase two trials were absolutely stellar. Uh, the potential chance of this getting approved by the FDA was exceedingly high. Um, we bought a position in it about six weeks before the FDA was gonna make their announcement, and that's called a PDUFA date. Uh, I'm gonna show you what that stands for. I can never remember because it never matters to me. But a PDUFA date is when the FDA is going to give a thumbs up or thumbs down on a medication. Well, got approved. Um, the medicine was, the stock was trading at $6.30. It's just off the right edge. I can't see exactly how high it went to, but we made 104% on the option. I expected to make more on that. You know, I, I don't know what the implied volatility was of the option, but, that, but that's, that's that is how much we banked. Now, the, uh, I think the, the last one I'm going to show you for now is Lanthius Holdings. Now, they have revolutionized the cardiac and cardiovascular imaging system um, by providing a, a unique radio contrast material. Now, I, 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 I can't tell you exactly how it works. It's given intravenously. And what it does is it lights up the heart and the entire cardiovascular tree of your body. So it visualizes the coronary arteries, the aorta, the carotid arteries, all the peripheral vasculature. And then Lanthius makes the machine that shoots the picture. So this gives you the ability to take dynamic images of how the heart is performing and pumping blood throughout the body. Now, now the place it's really used um, uh, mostly is really directly on the heart. Um, it, so you can see dynamically the uh, diameter of a coronary artery and see if there's any occlusion of a coronary artery, which may require a stent. Um, some invasive procedure to prevent a heart attack. Um, it's taken the place uh, to a significant degree of, uh, of stress testing, although some stress testing is done. This has really gone a long way to as being sort of a non-invasive way of, of, of you having to avoid running on that, on that treadmill. Um, it also is used post-operatively to check the patency of a stent to make sure that if a stent is placed, um, that it remains open and non-occluded. So it has really revolutionized the way um, the way cardiologists are allowed to look at the uh, at the uh, cardiovascular tree. Now we had to buy the stock because the options chain was inert. Just, there just was no volume and no open interest. And we bought the stock right around 70. I know that's off the edge. Um, here it went to 87.74, but we actually closed the stock and sold 100, one half of our positions for 30. Well, I don't know what 30 over 70 is. Um, that's, uh, it's over 50%, uh, I believe. No, it's not. I think it's about 40% on the stock, um, 42%. Um, and we're still holding it. Now it's retraced, it's heading right back to 100. Um, my target on the stock is 120. And what we're doing is we're waiting for the European Union 
to approve this, the, the contrast material and the diagnostic imaging platform. I mean, it's, take, it's taking forever and the stock has you know, been, been kind of moving around. Um, it's now uh, re reapproaching that $100 uh, mark and I expect it to eclipse it. And when the European Union comes out with their decision at some date, uh, I think it's going to go to 120. Now, the last one actually is SC Pharmaceuticals. Ticker is SCPH. Now, I don't know if any of you are familiar with Lasix. Um, Lasix is a diuretic. And what it does is it's, it forces the kidneys to make more urine. And it's given to patients intravenously. Now, it cannot be given to you as an outpatient. Oral Lasix is very poorly absorbed by the body. So the only effective way to administer it is intravenously. Now, if you have congestive heart failure, and there's a huge number of people in this country, unfortunately, who have congestive heart failure, and that means that they have a cardiomyopathy. Cardiomyopathy means that the walls of their ventricles are sick. Uh, they may have had multiple heart attacks. Um, you can get a cardiomyopathy from, um, um, from, from viral illnesses. Actually, you can get it uh, the, you know, in, in your mid-teens. Um, if you got COVID uh, and you develop myocarditis post that in, post injection. Uh, my son has a friend who did. He was in the hospital for six weeks. It injures a part of the myocardium, uh, impedes the injection of blood, um, to, hurts the function of the ventricles to inject blood systemically, then fluid backs up in the body and you go into total body volume overload. Now in order to get, in order to um, treat you, Almost always you're brought into the hospital and you're given uh, Lasix intravenously. Now, because it can only be administered in the hospital, it's problematic. And also there's a number of parameters that need to be watched, like your pulmonary capillary, pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. You have to make sure that not too much Lasix is, is administered. And it's often when you're in congestive heart failure done in the ICU. Well, SC Pharma in, invented an auto injector, and the auto injector reads your total body volume. And when your total body volume gets too high, it squirts Lasix into your blood. The auto injector is implanted into a vein and remains on your arm connected um, to the pump. So it actually treats you and prevents you from going into congestive heart failure as an outpatient. And the phase two trials, the patients that use the uh, auto injector had much fewer days in the hospital and they lived longer. Now, once you develop an end-stage uh, cardiomyopathy leading to congestive heart failure, your life is going to be shortened. But the key is, to what, whatever days you have to make them as hospital free as possible and to make them as great as possible. So, you know, if, if, you are, um, if, if your prognosis is for one year of life, now you're gonna have three. And of those three years, the vast majority will be spent out of the hospital symptom free as opposed to in the hospital with a lot of symptoms. So the phase two data was just really remarkably good we moved into SC Pharma prior to the FDA decision, and we got a 184% um, move on the option when the FDA gave it the Pharma. Now, if I remember correctly, this was the first medicine that SC Pharma got approved, um, their Udenkaya auto injector. Now, we're still in SC Pharma. We closed out our initial position. We, wait, we waited for it to retrace. And we're, when we're back in it, Hold it because multiple additional catalysts are coming up and I expect it to bump this position up again. Excuse me. Now, I just want to go over the drug approval process relatively briefly 
So you understand exactly the kind of assessments we're making and the reason why we have such a tremendously um, positive chance of getting an FDA approval on a medicine that we're looking at because we've done a tremendous amount of due diligence. Now, I could not do this unless I worked with three professors of medicine at the University of Miami because we have to look at a tremendous amount of phase two trial data uh, and analyze it to determine which medicines are going to have a 96% chance of approval or greater. That's a metric that we tag when, when I send out the trade. It's somewhat subjective, but it's based on a consensus analysis by myself and, and these three professors. And they, these are brilliant guys. So initially a medicine is just a, just a chemical compound in a laboratory. And in preclinical development, um, you can do anything you want with it. You cannot give it to um, a, a, a person or a human, but you can give it to rats and mice. I mean, if you have the money, I, you, I guess you, you could inject it into primates, um, but you cannot give it to people. But based on this preclinical data, you're going to apply to the FDA for what's called an investigational new drug application. Uh, about 80% of all medicines that uh, that are that are, uh, look for an IND get it. It's not that tough to get an IND if you have reasonably good data. Now, once it gets an IND, it comes under federal scrutiny. And what you do with it is watch very closely. Now, the early clinical phase one trials are simply safety trials and um, they're dosing trials. They do not look at the effectiveness of the, of the medicine. You first have to make sure it's safe. And based on the pharmacokinetic data from the patients who take it in the early clinical phase one trial, you come up with a dosing interval, whether it's oral, intramuscular, or intravenously, or intravenous. Um, the FDA will then give you approval to move on to an early clinical phase two. Now, the phase two trial is most commonly the catalyst trial. That's the early trial where, where you're going to look at a reasonably large number of patients, and we're going to look at an efficacy study. And that efficacy study can be sent to the FDA for ultimate drug approval. Now, rarely you have to go on to a clinical phase three trial. We really don't look at phase three trials. Very, very rarely do we look at it. And I can't even think of the last time we had to because we're mostly looking at drugs with orphan drug status that have no medicine yet available to treat them. Uh, fast track status, which I'm gonna talk about, so we don't even look at clinical phase two and then clinical phase, there's a clinical phase three, I'm sorry, and we don't look at the phase four, which I didn't even put up there, because that's a double blind placebo control with that medicine versus another medicine. These are much more complex studies, they're exceedingly expensive, they take years to complete. We, for the most part, are not involved. We're involved in the, in the clinical phase two trials. Now, at any point after a phase two trial is completed, uh, the company can then apply for a new drug application. Um, if the FDA accepts it, they're gonna, they're gonna give the company a PDUFA date, and that is gonna be the date that the advisory committee is gonna give the thumbs up or the thumbs down on the medicine. So that's our big date. And most of that is based on phase two to clinical data. Now, I just want to give you an example of one medicine as it moves through this phase. Now, I'm sure, uh, it may be that a lot of you do not, you do not realize, but 80% of gastric ulcers and 20% of duodenal ulcers are, are caused by a bacteria known as Helicobacter pylori. Now, if you, can, if you can cure the infection, the ulcer will heal. Now, 
gastric ulcers are very problematic because they are precursors again to gastric cancer. And also they occur predominantly in indigent groups of patients. So let me tell you, the FDA is very is a very politically motivated uh, group of people. Um, they take a lot of things into consideration. Sometimes I, I, I think uh, unreasonably so. That's why the COVID vaccine was approved way before there were any reasonable number of clinical trials and all the side effects such as myocarditis and you know in, in, in teenage uh, kids was not known about um, the um, the uh, safety of the medicine in, in pregnant women was not known about and we don't know anything about the long-term effects of this of this um, of the vaccine so I just want I just want to sort of uh, say that parenthetically, that there is a lot, there is unfortunately, and it's something that we have to take into account, there is a political component to what the FDA does. Now, the fact that this medicine is treating an illness that is predominantly seen in indigent patients already gives it some um, impetus forward. Now, what's, what the company is going to do since it, this is an, this is a bacterial based ulcer is take helicobacter pylori and they're going to grow it in a petri dish and this really is helicobacter pylori those white um areas here are just big clumps of helicobacter organisms and they're growing on agar nutrient agar um, that facilitates facilitates their growth and then the company is going to drop um, antibiotic impregnated discs. And the zone of clearing around the disc is going to determine the effectiveness of the antibiotic in killing the organism. Now, right now, actually, there was there is a, a, a therapy, and it's amoxicillin. But amoxicillin is associated with a tremendously high recurrent rate. But 80% of patients six months out are reinfected. So it's really not an effective therapy. So they came up with their own therapy. Now they applied for an IND. Um, so they went from the laboratory in the Petri dish to asking the um, FDA if they could use this medicine um, on humans. And, and, and then they received it. And then what they did was a phase one study. This is just safety and dosage. We're not looking at efficacy. This is not a catalyst event. What we're looking though is this was a fast tracked medicine. Now, very few medicines get fast track status and the company has to apply to the FDA. The FDA has to look at the medicine and decide that it is so important to get into the pharmacy that they're going to, they're going to give it prior, priority status. Now, a fast-track medicine has a much higher ultimate chance of approval than a non-fast-track. So we're going to look for fast-track medicines. And the fact is there was currently no long-term effective therapy for peptic ulcer disease. So the company did its phase one trials and got fast track status. That's when we got into the trade. And this is really pretty, pretty much what I said. This is the first clinical phase of the study. Um, it only takes a few months to complete, it only has a few volunteers. And if you're really healthy and you don't, and you don't have any money, um, this is, I mean, this is a nice way to make money, I have to tell you. There, there, are vo there are professional volunteers. I mean, you can get paid two or 3,000 bucks per person to simply take the medicine. You just have to do it very reliably. Now, then you go to a phase two study, and this is where you give the medicine on a predetermined dosing interval, which is determined by the phase one study. And here's where you look at the effectiveness of the medicine and any potential side effects of the medicine. Now, this is done on several hundred patients, and it's enough to 
it, it's impossible really to come up with a, a st statistical analysis based on historical data, since you can't do a head-to-head -head trial because there's no other medicine available. So you're, you're gonna wind up doing it on a few hundred patients to make it clear that this is not a random chance event. And if there's greater healing in the treatment patients, it's due to the medication. And then it's gonna to go to the FDA after the phase two is completed. And the phase two is efficacy and side effects. Now the top line results are the largest catalyst events um, that we can find. This consists of, of a couple of hundred people with the disease being targeted. The studies, excuse me, can last several months to two years. Only 33% of drugs make it through phase two, and a tiny percentage are approved on phase two data. Now, that medicine got approved on a phase two. Um, if there are, um, if if there if it's required, we don't look at phase three trials. This 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 includes hundreds to thousands of patients, um, and here you look for statistical significance. Um, it still has fast track status, but th this medicine is ne is never going to go into phase three. And um, there's actual a phase four, in which is a double blind con conceivo controlled study, where you pit this against another medicine or against the placebo uh, controlled study. This can take actually a couple of years to complete. We're not looking at phase fours either. We're gonna stay with the phase two data on fast track medicines that have orphan drug status. They're fast track because there's no current therapy out there to treat an illness. So the fast track designation is submitted by the company um, uh, at, at uh, early in the in the drug development process, the FDA responds within 60 days. Now, to get a fast track status, you have to you have to be treating a debilitating or life threatening condition that fulfills an unfit, unmet medical need. So, if it's something brand new for the treatment of AIDS, cancer, diabetes, epilepsy some very, very pressing illness in which there simply is no tr current effective treatment, then you are allowed to apply for fast track stats. And if you get it, it means the FDA is gonna take you under your arm and walk you through the cl clinical trials. They're gonna help you write study design. So when you get a fast track status, it sort of means the FDA is pulling for you. They want the medicine to get approved because there's no current effective therapy. They're gonna make sure study design doesn't have any flaws. They're gonna make sure you have enough patients in the study to meet their requirements. So all of a sudden, the chance of approval just skyrockets really astronomically. Now this, I really, really, really talked about. You're gonna meet with the FDA. You're gonna discuss the study. Um, uh, you get priority, pr priority review, and that fast track status comes up for approval quickly. Some companies have to wait for months to get their medicine approved. Here, uh, the wait time is shortened dramatically. So we're gonna look almost always at fast track medicines that have orphan drug status. There is no current effective therapy um, and they're fast, they've been, they've been officially approved for fast track status. And between myself and the three professors I work with, we are gonna give it a 95% or greater chance of success. A lot of the medicines, we give a 99% chance of success. And I'll just tell you really quickly about one that I, I don't have a slide for. We just got the FDA approval on it, was uh, Bluebird, Bio, Bluebird Biotech. They produced the first medicine. 
It's a very, very complicated um, met, um, uh, immune therapy that actually um, replaces in a large number of hemoglobin molecules the sickle cell gene. So, you know, you know, patients with sickle cell disease, they have vasoocclusive crisis, painful crisis. Um, they, they get tremendous pain in their joints because, because the vessels occlude when their red blood cells sickle, they clump. So they're constantly in the hospital for pain medication and blood transfusions. So this was a novel, this is a major breakthrough. I mean, I gave this a 99% chance of success. It, it was approved and we got a huge winner on Blue Tech Bio. And that just occurred, I think, last week. Now, the, the Padufa decision, it stands for Precision Drug User Free Act. You don't have to remember it. All we, all we need to know is that's the date that the FDA is going to make its decision. Oftentimes when that Padufa date comes out, let's say it's six weeks out, we're gonna to start to see buying interest in the stock. If it has great clinical phase two data, a lot of um, institutional uh, organizations have people that evaluate these medicines in, in the way that we do, and you're gonna start seeing it volume increase, uh, the price of the, of the stock start to rise, as it moves into the into the Padufa date. Now, this is the thing that we never want to receive, and that's a CRL. Now, a CRL is a complete response letter, and what it does is describe all the deficiencies the FDA found in the application of your medicine. So it's essentially a denial, uh, and the FDA has to tell you in tremendous detail exactly why the medicine was denied. Now, in some cases, it's really just for administrative reasons and you're able to resubmit it so it won't kill the prospects for the medicine. You know, we're gonna take a hit on it if we have the option because it may take two or three months to fix these issues, but then we'll go right back in um, when, it, when it is resubmitted and all these deficiencies are, um, are fixed. In other cases, it just buries the medicine. Now, we almost never get a CRL on, on a medicine that we're in. When it's fast tracked and has orphan drug status and has, and has great phase two data, and the FDA is basically um, giving it tremendous support, you're rarely going to get a CRL. Now I'm just going to show you a few of our older um, our older winners. This is Novavax, fast track medicine for the first res respiratory syncytial virus vaccine, made 364 percent on the option. Um, re respiratory syncytial virus um, is mostly a, a, a viral a pneumonia of the young, um, uh, age six months to you know to early teens. It can be seen in immune deficient patients with a, with, with a severe um, chronic, uh, you know, chronic obstructive lung disease, but it's essentially mostly a disease of the young. There was no prevention. It was the first vaccine, and we, we, we got a monster winner on Novavax. Um, this is Regeneron. Now, they made ILEA, which was, which was a, a breakthrough therapy designation for macular degeneration. Now, macular degeneration really occurs to a lesser or greater extent in all of us as we age. In some of us, it doesn't become clinically problematic. But you know, in the elderly, your, uh, your vision degrades. I mean, just like your reflexes slow, um, your muscles tend to weaken. It's part of the aging, your skin wrinkles, it's part of the aging process that you get some degree of macular degeneration. Now, the macula is responsible for 20-20 vision in the eye. It has, it's the area of the back of the eye that has the highest density of rods and cones. Now, some elderly people get severe degeneration. ILEA is, it remains the treatment of choice. Now, we're in a medicine that's still, we're still waiting for the, um, 
approval. It's called Occupier. An Occupier is an open position we have in the portfolio. It may be one that you can get into still. It's up about 10%. But uh, the FDA has not given its approval date yet. It's going to come in May, uh, uh, in, uh, I think in May, on May 31 of 2024. And it's the first most effective treatment um, for diabetic retinopathy that's given orally. Occupier didn't have any uh, options that had any volume on it. We had to buy the stock. The stock is really cheap. I'm going to show it to you. We're already in it, and it's been, it's been firing out of the box. Now here's another one, Clovis Oncology, Rubraca. Uh, you may see a commercial for this on television, um, but it really revolutionized the way that ovarian cancer was treated. Um, it's not a cure. It, 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 it's a palliative therapy. You're on it for life, but it really does a great job in um, and not only treating the primary source, the, the, the ovarian tumor, but any um, you know, advanced metastasis um, to any other parts of the body. We made 302% uh, on the approval of Rubraca. Uh, here's United Therapeutics. Now, this is for early brain cancer therapy. Now, this is unitoxin. Now, um, gliomas, are the most common tumors seen in children. And actually they're seen in adults. And a glioblastoma, which is a form of a uh, glioma, is um, what uh, cost John McCain his life. Um, and I know he was treated with unitoxin, but it has very, very limited effectiveness, but it was still given approval because it was an orphan drug. It was used to treat uh, a glioma, which has absolutely no therapy. So even though it, it, it had statistically significant effects, those effects were not major in character. We only made 57% on the option, because this is already a very, very expensive stock. Now, I'm, I want to show you how you're going to get these um, notifications uh, via email. Now, this is how it's going to look. Um, now, Amelix is another winner we had. It, 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 and now, Amelix is a clinical stage biopharm biopharmaceutical firm. And when I say clinical stage, it means they have no active medicine uh, in the pharmacy. They're looking for their first one. And it, excuse me. Excuse me for one second. I, I don't know if that's going to happen again. Let me mute it. Hold on, I'm sorry. Always when I'm talking, on when I'm so it was at, an, for AMX 0035 for the treatment of amyotropic lateral sclerosis. Now, if you're aware of if you are aware of ALS, it's called Lou Gehrig's disease. It's a progressive neurogenitive disease of the central nervous system. Once you get it, there's a 100% fatality rate. And there was absolutely no therapy on the market for it. And what the virus does is puts, it, it puts a lot of stress uh, and destroys nerve cells of the brain and spinal cord. And everybody who gets ALS ultimately dies from respiratory failure because the diaphragms, that move your lungs up and down like accordions. Just let me get this so I can stop this from. Hello, Mark. I think you're audio. Yeah, I'm here. Out. Just give me one sec. Oh, okay. I'm sorry to bother you. No, no problem. No problem. Okay, we're good. So, um, and I apologize for that. So, um, Amelix 
uh, had AMX 0035 in development. I'm not even going to try to read these components to it. They're not important to us. The phase two trials were exceedingly, uh, su su there were superlative phase two trials. We jumped right into Amelix. The medicine got approved. I didn't put in a percentage, but this is the, oh, we made 147% on the option. I didn't, I, I didn't think I had done it. It moved from eight to 17 on the approval of that medication. And you can see the huge volume spike and the gap. Now we're in way before this occurs. So we're sitting here and we get the benefit of the whole bump to the upside. And then I just wanted to show you our last one. I think it's Amicus Therapeutics, uh, the ticker's FOLD. Um, now this is a medicine, again, fast-tracked orphan drug status. This is how you're gonna get it in the uh, newsletter. I just don't wanna give you trades. I want you to understand why we're taking them. And even though none of us are doctors, we want, I still want to acquaint you with the illness and acquaint you with why we're taking it and why between myself and the three um, professors I work with, believe this medicine has a tremendous chance of getting approved. Now this was to treat Pompe's disease and Pompe's disease is a rare genetic disorder of glucose metabolism. And obviously it, it's, a, a, it's a genetic disorder. So you're gonna see babies, children, very few people with this inherited gene defect live into their adult life. And if you Google it and you see how deformed these patients become, it's really, you see how sad it is. And what happens is everything that we eat eventually is broken down into glucose. No matter what we take in, that first precursor in the blood is glucose. Then body metabolism decides whether it's gonna be um, processed into fat, used directly as energy, or stored as glycogen polymers, as glucose polymers known as glycogen. Now, if it's stored, now glycogen is used for short-term energy and it's stored in muscles in these little packages called vacuoles. Now, if you have Pompe's disease, you can't get the uh, glycogen out of these storage vacuoles. So they just build up in your muscles and they cause muscular degeneration uh, and you're not adequately able to break down um, glucose to energy. So patients with this illness die young. Um, and what um, Amicus did was develop a drug called AT-GAA, um, which actually replaced the, um, the medicines, the, the genetic disorder. Um, hang on one second. which actually re replaced the disorder, uh, uh, the genetic deficiency, and um, really gave new life and new hope to these patients. Uh, the chance of approval on this medicine was 99% at orphan drug status. Um, and I, I really have a lot, a lot more um, detail here. I'm not gonna throw at you, but what I just want you to see is I really go into as much detail as I can in order to teach you why I believe and why the professors and I believe this is going to become um, a standard of care treatment for Pompey's. It was approved and I didn't put the percentage in, but here's the, the really big move up on the stock. And this is on fold. So here was our 2022 performance. We had 20 trades and we had 18 winners. Now this is the percentage move on the stock, not on the option. But I'll show you, here's our 2023 to date performance. Um, and we have 30 trades with 27 winners and three losers. 288% on Amelix, 366% 
on emerging bioscientists. I remember that's the one we went over, Narcan. Um, Presogen, 218%. 266% on VBI vaccine, which made a revolutionary new uh, medicine to treat hepatitis B. Um, 205% on uh, Acadia Pharmaceuticals. Um, 162%, we traded Bluebird earlier on a different um, uh, FDA approval. 267% uh, on Acer. So when, it, when we do get an occasional CRL and an FDA denial, you know, we're gonna take, if we're, if we're trading the option, we're gonna take about an 85% loss, but our upside on 27 out of 30 trades is just enormous to the upside. One upside wipes out all three of our losers for the year. So we currently have a few open positions and I'm gonna give you one right here. And I promised you a, you know, kind of a free pick. Um, now day one pharmaceuticals, Dawn, is looking at FDA approval for um, uh, Torvo. Uh, I, I, I used to be able to pronounce, I just haven't looked at it now for a while. It's uh, Tovor, uh, Tovor Fenim, and it doesn't really matter whether you can pronounce it or not. No, it, it's monotherapy for relapsing or progressive low-grade gliomas. Remember I told you unitoxin had limited effectiveness? Well, this has unbelievable effectiveness. It's one of the few chemotherapeutic agents, though it's an immune-based therapy, so its toxicity is minimal. And it's one of the rare medicines that easily penetrate the central nervous system. So it was already, it's, now it's been granted two very unique statuses. One, it's been granted priority review, which is fast track review. The other very rare status it's been granted is pediatric fast track status because this brain tumor is most common in children and the number of um, kids who get it statistically is relatively high. Um, and when you see those poor kids who are bald and, and, and you see them on TV, like for St. Jude's or, or one of these hospitals that just treat uh, cancer patients, many, many of them have low grade gliomas of the brain. The problem is, is that chemotherapy cannot penetrate the blood brain barrier and currently what's in use now is mostly radiation therapy, which is horrifically toxic. This is gonna revolutionize the way this disease is treated. And in addition, since we got into this medicine and it's DAWN, now we got in at a pretty inexpensive price all the way down at 11, but I've raised the buy limit to 13 because I think it's gonna to go to 20. Now the PDUFA date is May 31 of 2024 but it's, a, it's attracting institutional buy. Um, and it's just, if you look at a chart of it, it, you know, it's not a straight line up, but it's, but it's a sloping line to the upside. Now it's also been found since it got fast track status for, um, for uh, gliomas that it also treats all solid tumors of the central nervous system. Well, it, it treats a select one that, that has, um, it, that has a raft uh, enzyme um, um, disorder. So you have to segregate the tumors a little bit, but most solid tumors that let's say originate in the lungs or originate um, in the kidneys and they, or in the ovaries and metastasize to the brain become untreatable and you're, unfortunately you're, you're gonna succumb, succumb to the illness fast. I believe this is also gonna get subsequent approval for the treatment of those. So we have two catalyst events that we're, that we're looking at. One is the, in which the, a PADUFA data set is for the treatment of gliomas in children. And then farther out, where the, they haven't even looked for a new drug application yet, but it's gonna come, is for the treatment of all solid tumors or select number of solid tumors of the brain. This is the premier um, immunotherapy that, that crosses the blood-brain barrier and treats these illnesses. So it's really a stellar uh, medicine. Unfortunately, Dawn does have options. 
No one's interested in them. And the reason is there's no fixed dates. Um, and people and, and investors see that this medicine and this has multiple potential catalysts. So they're going to opt to buy the stock and not buy an option. So this is their pick, D-A-W-N. I, I think it's good up to 20. You just have to hang on to it through May 31 of 2024. It's unusual for us to get into any position this early. Usually we're looking to get in and out in, um, in a month to a month and a half. But um, this one, since it's already attracting institutional buying, we're in it, we're up a nice percentage, and we're just going to ride it through. Now, I don't believe that any other options trade has greater predictive power. This is based on fundamental analysis. All these companies are tiny, tiny companies with very tiny floats. So when people come in to buy it, they're gonna skyrocket the share of the stock. The, the one that I showed you on United Therapeutics, which is a big company with a huge float, only got us about a 57% winner. The two and 300% options winners come on the small float stocks. And one winner should, should pay for a year of the service. If it, probably for two years. Now, I just put up a, th a, a few um, uh, quick, um, um, I, I can't remember what the, you know, uh, this is um, uh, Trustpilot, uh, Botech Blockbuster is just what I've been looking for. I got my trades, Mark is uh, how accurate his alerts are after 40% increase in my account. I'm a member for life. Thanks, Mark. Your professional guidance has been amazing. I gave Mark's biotech service a try. Um, it comes to biotech, his first three trades were all over 100%. Thanks, Mark, you're truly a gifted trader. And actually, you know what? This takes the less knowledge of options than anything that I do. It's really understanding the underlying medicine and realizing that you just can't trade a, a, a very low volume option. That really is, is what gives us the winners. And uh, Samantha G, I'm so thankful. Um, I have grown my account to under 50%. Um, I told all my friends about the service. It's well worth the annual cost. So here's the price. Um, we're really doing a really, really huge discount. And we're, you know, we're doing it for Thanksgiving and the New Year's, um, turning around to 2024. Now, when you when when you if you, when you go to check out, and I hope you will give it a try. Um, you can cancel it at any time. You're not going to get any recurrent billing. Normally, monthly, it's 115. If you put in the coupon code SAVE70, it's going to re be reduced to $45 a month. So for 45 bucks, you get to try it for a month. You're going to get the ability to trade it. Um, the FDA is coming out with new PDUFA dates every month. Um, so we're usually into a new position fairly often. I can't tell you exactly when because I'm, I'm at the mercy of the FDA, um, but they tend to come in clusters. Uh, quarterly, it's normally $3.95. If you put in the coupon code, save $100. It's gonna drop to $2.95 um, at checkout. Now, um, I'm, not gonna go into, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna go into that. So that's, um, that's really the service. Now, I, I just wanna give you our phone number. I didn't put it on the slide, it's 786. 786-732-4656. It's on the website. If you want to give us a call, I'll answer any questions that anybody has. Hey. Hang on. Hey, hey, Jeff. I would think as how pharmaceuticals is a, spec, a specific section. Um, well, we, you never run out of companies, Jeff. They're con venture capitalists are constantly forming new ones. And I mean, if, you, if, you, if you've got a few billion dollars and you wanna take $500 million and own the vast majority of a new company and, and it's being put together by brilliant people who have a vision, these companies, these new startups are happening all the time. And there's really literally hundreds of them out there because they're, they're, they're small cap and some of them are micro cap stocks. So really the, um, 
the gallery of these that are out there are just innumerable. Hi, Einan. What is the average haul time? It's usually six to eight. It's usually, um, I, you know, to give you the, the biggest width, it's usually four weeks to eight weeks because we have the catalyst date. We know when the FDA is going to make its decision. So we're not getting into the into the position with a, um, in a you know in a black box situation where we don't know when our um, when our answer is going to come. We know it. It's in black and white, and 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 the FDA is is, is going to give us a thumbs up. Great, Erwin. Great, in, and I I appreciate that. I, I really do. Um, so listen, everyone, I really appreciate um, you giving me your time. Um, I hope you will give this service a try. I, I really doubt you're gonna be disappointed. I take every trade I recommend in my real money account in Thinkorswim. If anyone ever doubts that, I will snapshot my portfolio and show you the closed positions and the open positions. I get in at the price I give to you. I get out of the target that I set for you, and I hold them as long as you do. And this has been a very profitable niche for me during a period of time because I, I, I trade a lot of different options. But the biotech positions have been rock steady through, were through really rough overall markets and through weaker ones. Yesterday we had a great a Fed announcement and the rock and the market skyrocketed, and you know it brought a lot of money into our into our open um, small cap biotechs. But um, these really pretty much trade independently. So listen, everyone, I really thank you for your time. If you have any questions, uh, you can call 786-732-4656. But the 45 bucks is the lowest monthly price I have ever offered this service. Everyone have a wonderful evening, and I wish you all the best of luck, and a happy holiday, and a happy new year. Bye-bye, uh, everyone.